Do you think a cinema lens will make your videos look more professional? We need one of them. Do we? Well, yeah, because it's going to make our videos look ten times better. And all our Instagram peeps are going to think we're cool. Peeps? Will they improve the way you film? <laughs> or is it all just hype and can we get by with using our standard photography lenses? The, Sammy, don't listen to him. You'll be fine with this one. Thanks. Oh yeah, sorry, this is the full size version. Right, that's better. I put this affordable cinema lens from Seven Artisans, link in the description, against my Lumix S series prime lens to see if there are any noticeable visual and practical benefits to using a cine lens for somebody who works alone as a single person crew. Now I know reeling off lists can be super boring, so I decided to keep it interesting but short and sweet and see if I could say it all in one breath. <sighs> Because cinema lenses require manual focus, they have geared teeth to help support follow focus systems, while photography lenses have a smooth grip for the hand, they're metal so they're more durable and the added weight helps stabilise camera footage as cinema cameras don't usually have IBIS. Set of lenses are roughly the same size to keep lens changes fast. The aperture is controlled on the lens itself with a D-click ring for smooth alterations and the amount of light it lets in is measured in T-stops instead of F-stops, which is theoretically more accurate because it takes into account all of the elements inside the lens and not just the aperture size. <laughs> That's it. That is it. So I noticed that the Lumix lens was slightly sharper, just a tiny bit, there's barely anything in it. To be honest, I don't mind a lens that's a little bit softer, because I don't like an overly sharp image. But if you do like a sharp image, you can always turn the sharpness up in your camera. What I did notice is there's a little bit of purple fringing between the black and white lines on the Lumix. Now there's barely any of that fringing with the Cine lens, which I'm very impressed by. Only a very slight difference in colour. I noticed that the Cine lens was a little bit on the pink side. I do prefer the colours of the Lumix lens. Maybe it's just what I'm used to, but with 10-bit colour, it's really not a problem because you can dial in your presets, use your looks in however way you want, and get the colours you want out of it anyway. So both of them have a good starting point. It's an, only a very slight difference, so I wouldn't let that sway your decision either way. <laughs> This was a close one. At first, I preferred the Cine lens flare, but actually, having looked at it a little bit more, I preferred the Lumix lens flare. It just seemed a little bit cleaner because in some areas, the Cine lens flare was a little bit blotchy and uh, it started to bother me a little bit. So, maybe a little win for the Lumix lens on that one. Again, this is gonna all be different depending on what lens you're comparing it to. The bokeh was very similar, maybe the standard lens is a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, extremely good. I've compared it to other lenses before and preferred the Lumix lens bokeh, so they do really well. Another thing worth mentioning is you can actually get slightly bigger bokeh balls because the minimum focus distance is shorter on the standard lens. Which brings me on to my next point. This cine lens in particular has a minimum focus distance of 48 centimeters, whereas the Lumix lens is 42, I believe. Six centimeters, it sounds like hardly anything, but as you can see, you can get a lot closer to your subject with this particular lens over this particular cine lens. And that can actually make a big difference depending on what you're filming. However, if I do want to get close up to something, I will get a dedicated macro lens to do that job. So it's not a deal breaker for me because there's other more important factors that I'll think about with this lens. Focus breathing to me seemed exactly the same. I couldn't notice any difference to be honest. However, because the focus throw and the barrel of the lens itself is a lot bigger, you can actually be a lot more precise with this cine lens. It's just so smooth and it works really well, but it doesn't stop there because it's also got imperial and metric markings on the lens itself. If you are trying to get into manual focus, then these standard lenses aren't great because they've got a continuous focus wheel, which means if you get to infinity or your minimum focus distance, and keep going it's gonna lose its place and also because it's digital it just doesn't work in the same way sometimes you can overshoot or undershoot it and it's just not very precise it's also not as smooth as it is on this cine lens that is just oh, that is nice that is really nice as I mentioned before they have geared teeth to help support follow focus systems however I found on Amazon these geared teeth rings that you can actually put onto your lenses I'll leave a link in the description well worth picking up some of these they come in all different sizes it's gonna make attaching your follow focuses way easier in fact you can't do it without so it's the only option 
Cinema cameras don't tend to have image stabilization in them and neither do cine lenses. So having a heavier lens will change the weight distribution of your camera and it's gonna be a little bit more sturdier. Also, image stabilization in the camera isn't the best. It doesn't look very natural. You get that warping and wobbling in the edges. Even on some of the best image stabilization cameras out there, it's not as natural. So I tend to switch off the image stabilization if I'm going handheld and just get a heavier lens and it's gonna make your shots a lot more steadier and they're just gonna look a lot more cinematic because of that. If you're a gimbal person, the only thing you'll probably have to bear in mind is the extra weight that it's gonna to add to your setup. I'm using the DJI RS3 gimbal, which is the smaller of the two new ones, but I'm only using the S5, so that's a lightweight setup anyway way and it handles it fine but if you're using a larger heavier camera just bear in mind that your gimbal might not be able to handle the extra weight love this thing nothing better than manual folk i love it look at that in all honesty, I was expecting the cine lens to look a lot different. I just thought there'd be more of a distinct quality about this. But then I remembered it is just a budget version and it's kind of the same thing, just housed in a different shell, if you will. This is much more geared towards videography over photography. So which one is right for you? Well, if you want to use autofocus, then there's only one route to go down. It has to be the standard primes. But if you're trying to get into manual focusing, then this is definitely the way to go. And I think something of this price is plenty good enough for your first cine lens. In conclusion, you need to go with the one that suits your needs the best. So you have this one, and you take this one, and go and have some fun. So at this point, you may have chosen between a cine lens and a standard lens, but you're probably left wondering one more thing. Which focal length should I get? It is actually quite important which focal length you choose based on a number of factors. And this video here is going to explain exactly what the differences are so that you can make the right decision.